We'll come to the part 3 of the inductor series, and well, in this course, we will see how to calculate the inductance of an inductor, which is measured in Henry, we will see what is the total inductance when inductors are placed in series or parallel, after this we will see that inductors have many more schematic symbols than the one we are used to, and last but not least, we will cover the different types of inductors that exist. So, let's begin! An inductor is about as simple as an electronic component can get. It is simply a coil of wire. But it turns out, however, that a coil of wire can do some very interesting things because of the magnetic properties of a coil. So what we see here is a battery, a switch, a light bulb, a little resistance to limit the current, another switch, and a coil of wire, in other words an inductor. If the inductor is taken out from the equation and I close the switch, the light bulb will light up, right? Nothing complicated here, the light bulb is just a resistor and the resistance creates heat to make the filament in the bulb to glow. So what do you think will happen if I close this switch? Well, the current will start flowing in this path, the inductor will try to oppose the sudden change in current of course, but as the time passes, it builds up more and more magnetic field, reaching a point where the impedance of the inductor is very small, basically zero. And since the coil impedance is lower than the resistance of the light bulb, the current will choose the path with the least resistance. Remember that current always takes the path of least resistance, and this is a good example of that. So again, when current first starts flowing in the coil, the coil wants to build up a magnetic field. While the field is building, the coil inhibits the flow of current, and once the field is built, current can flow normally through the wire. When the switch gets opened, the magnetic field around the coil keeps current flowing in the coil until the field collapses, and the current keeps the bulb lit for a period of time, even though the switch is open. In other words, an inductor can store energy in its magnetic field, and an inductor tends to resist any change in the amount of current flowing through it. So the capacity of an inductor is controlled by four factors. The first one is the number of coils. More coils means more inductance. The second one is the material that the coils are wrapped around. The third one is the cross-section area of the coil, so more area means more inductance. And the last one is the length of the coil. A short coil means narrower coils, which means more inductance. Putting iron in the core of an inductor gives it much more inductance than air or any non-magnetic core would. The standard unit of inductance is the Henry and the equation for calculating the number of Henrys in an inductor is the following. And honestly, you will almost never use this equation unless you want to build your own inductor, but it's nice to know how all these parameters affect the inductance of an inductor. Now let's see what happens with this inductance when it is either connected in series or parallel. Let's start with inductors placed in series. In this circuit, three inductors are placed in series. Just like when calculating the series resistance of multiple resistors, the equation to calculate the total inductance is the same. So the equation to calculate the total series inductance is the following, and by knowing this, the total inductance of the circuit would be 60 Henry's. So when inductors are in series, they simply add together. However, when inductors are placed in parallel, the equation is more complex. The equation to calculate the total inductance is the following, and this might look familiar to you since it's the same equation when capacitors are placed in series or when resistors are placed in parallel. Given this equation, the total inductance of the circuit would be 5.45 Henry's. Until now, you have just seen this type of symbol for inductors, right? But you have to know that there are many different symbols for inductors, as you can see here. The most basic symbol as we know is the first one, and if you see a symbol for an inductor in a circuit, you can find out based on the symbol the type of the inductor used. As you can see, this one represents an inductor with no core at all, this one has a core and the material used for the core is ferrite. We also have iron dust cord and iron cord inductors. These are the most used types of core for an inductor, so each one got a different symbol. Depending on the application, 
there are many types of inductors, right? And they come in various form factors. There are high frequency inductors, low frequency inductors, low frequency power line inductors, and some specially designed inductors for decoupling and filter applications. So let's see briefly what are the different types of inductors out there. However, it can be a little more difficult to exactly define the different types of inductor because the variety of inductor applications is so wide. Although it is possible to define an inductor by its core material, this is not the only way in which they can be categorized. However, for the basic definitions, this approach is used. So the first one is the well-known air cord inductor. This type of inductor is normally used for uh, radio frequency applications where the level of inductance required is smaller. And the fact that no core is used has several advantages. Like for example, there is no loss within the core as air is lossless. And this results in a high level of quality factor, denoted as Q, assuming the inductor of coil resistance is low. The next type of inductor based on the inductor material is the iron cord inductor. Well, iron cores are normally used for high power and high inductance type of inductor. Some audio coils or chokes may use iron laminate, but they are generally not widely used. On the other hand, ferrite cord inductors are widely used and they are very popular. These are the type of inductors which offer advantages of decreased cost and low core losses at high frequencies. Inductors may also be categorized in terms of their mechanical construction. There are a number of different standard types by which inductors may be categorized. The first one is bobbin based inductor. Well, in this type, as you can see, the coil is spiraled on the bobbin. So the bobbin based inductor designs vary widely in terms of power rating, voltage and current levels, operating frequencies, etc. They come in two varieties, so they can be either through-hole or surface mount. The next one is the toroidal inductor, and this type of inductor, as you can see the coil is spiraled on a toroid. The advantage of a toroid is that the toroid enables the magnetic flux to travel in a circle around the toroid, and as a result the flux leakage is very low. However, the disadvantage is that it requires a special winding machine to perform the manufacture as the wire has to be passed through the toroid for each third required. The last type that we are going to talk about is the multi-layer ceramic inductor. Well, this type of inductor is widely used for surface mount technology. The inductor is manufactured within a ferrite or more commonly a magnetic ceramic material. These are mainly used in mobile communication systems and noise suppression applications.